They're renewable mild non-ionic surfactants with a hydrophobic algal chain between 8 and 16 in chain length and a hydrophilic head group consisting of a glucose oligomer uh, between 1.3 and 1.7 on average units. They're typically sold 50% active in water and you've got the original commercializing company BASF um, selling that alongside more recent entrants like uh, LG, Sepic, uh, others marketing the product Dow, Crota, etc. It's a global market of around 400,000 tons per year. APGs are made by reacting glucose with a fatty alcohol. It's an acid catalyzed condensation reaction and that forms the glucoside. And then there's obviously some additional steps like uh, dehydration of the starting glucose monohydrate and uh, purification, distillation, maybe some bleaching. For those of you wishing to get into the manufacture of these products, I encourage you to get in touch with Balestra, the Italian engineering company for technology and equipment. Where are they used? They're mild and renewable, and so they've got extensive use now in cosmetics and personal care. I went on to Potion, pulled off the following brands. Um, you've got Everpure Shampoo, which is a sulfate-free brand from L'Oreal, using APG Curl Expression from L'Oreal, uh, Living Proof, a Unilever brand, Neutrogena from Kenview, The Ordinary, which is an Estee Lauder brand, Drunk Elephant from Shiseido, on and on and on. A lot of cosmetics and personal care brands. Also, on the household cleaning side, you've got products from, and I'm reading here, um, uh, Ecolab, which is part of SC Johnson, Greenworks, which of course is a Clorox brand, Windex, Dawn, P&G, The Honest Company, and again, on and on. Dishwash is a big area, but also laundry detergent and other types of household cleaner are using the uh, algal polyglucosides. So what about regulatory? Well, they've been around for 30 odd years, so pretty solid, pretty clean. There's been some mention in publications about contact dermatitis, and I provide the references below. I'm not sure how significant those are, and there may be outliers. There's also been mention in the EU detergent ingredient database about aquatic toxicity. But again, when you look at the EU REACH dossier, uh, the profiles look pretty clean. So look, I'm not an expert. Disclaimer, I'm not an expert on regulatory and tox. So I'm going to leave it to folks who I know watch these videos um, to comment and give us the up-to-date information. But generally speaking, in terms of registrations in particular, with 30 years worth of history, um, they're widely globally accepted, including China. And so I know that's a that's a key consideration for a lot of brands. So why am I talking about APGs? There are three reasons. Number one, they're getting a fresh look today. They're renewable, green, sulfate-free, dioxane-free, all that. And of course, they've got pretty good penetration in personal care cosmetics and household cleaning. So um, a very interesting surfactant class in and of themselves. However, number two, the new bio surfactant companies are using them typically as a benchmark, not because APGs are fermentation based, but because they're mild and renewable and they're being sold at a higher price point than the typical benchmarks like LAS and SLEA. Yes. The third reason I'm talking about them today is that they are an illustration of the precept that new chemicals take time and money. They've been at this, the APGs have been at it in the commercial market for over 30 years. They were brought to uh, the market by Henkel, which then became Cognos. The Henkel Chemicals Division then became part of BASF. And so when you think about the millions of man hours that have been put into this uh, product category by the largest chemical company in the world, and, uh, and of course the investment in the plants and the process technology and the patent development and the technical uh, applications development, this just serves to underline the point that new takes time, takes money, and is very hard. It's not impossible. It's just hard, and that's something to bear in mind when you jump into this area. So that's it for this week. I hope you have found this interesting. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll talk again soon.